Hello and welcome back to Shadowrun. When we last left off, I was about to break in here and rescue Aragorn. Really? Um, ah! Yeah. Stop that. Um, up from the corporate prison here. I tried like three times. Unfortunately, um, uh, yeah, m with my electronics. Well, this is actually beefed up higher than it was last time because um, I had been doing some leveling up um, to this point and um, I've been doing a lot more so. Uh, yeah, um, I, it's not like the combat was all that difficult. I'm definitely prepared for that. It's just the... Um, uh, all of the, uh, hacking and the lock picking, um, I couldn't do. Uh, my, just my levels and my equipment weren't good enough. So, um, I've been doing a lot of, um, improving. So let's show off some of the stuff that I've been doing here. So, um... Yeah, let's start with um, this one, where I'm heading off to Rencaro Oncology. If you've noticed, um, Trent is no longer with us. Um, instead, um, yeah, I decided to uh, hire Walking Bear as a permanent uh, uh, Shadow Runner. Um, She's got some a bit higher uh, skills, and she's also an orc, which means she can take a lot of abuse, uh, physical abuse, before she goes down. Um, I've given her the Predator Heavy Pistol. She actually starts off with the Warhawk, which is, by numbers, the most powerful um, pistol in the game, but uh, from going from power brutal to power high, so one point down in power, you gain, go from six bullets to 15. Um, damage, damage is uh, essentially just how many points of damage you do. Power is how well it goes through armor. Um, and yeah, one point of penetration doesn't matter all that much. Um, she also comes with a whole bunch of fetishes, a um, spell focus for heal wounds, uh, which just means she casts heal wounds that much better, and she has a bear totem because she's a shaman. Um, she also has mana zap rather than the fire dart that Trent has, mana storm, which is an area of effect, very nice, sleep, heal wounds, obviously, and confusion. Um, so yeah, Walking Bear probably is going to be one of the characters we're going to end the game with. There's one um, magic user that's technically better, um, Freya, but uh, I think we're going to just use the uh, uh, Walking Bear because um, she's just as good as anybody else. Because um, yeah, if you keep people around and you know, put points into their skills. Anyone can be as good as anybody else. So, really, it's just um, which portraits you want to look at. Anyway, let's um, first head off over here, I think. Yep. And I'm going to buy myself a... Uh, Slightly better um, uh, cyber deck, um, and that's going to let me hack a lot more or a lot easier. Um, and in this video, I'm going to show um, the Matrix, which is um, a seg segment of this game I haven't gotten into. But if you want a place to earn money, yeah, you you do that by hacking and stealing. Um, Oop, didn't mean to do that. 
Um, you also notice I picked up a uh, big box that says E, electronic kit. Um, this will help me when I have to uh, disable locks. Um, it improves your, um, your electronic skill um, for a short period of time. But um, yeah, uh, so that's this point. Let me um, load a slightly different save. And here, well, we're going to buy ourselves a smart link because we have uh, one extra hole in the head. Why not add another one? Oh, I've already bought that. Um, and I'm going to buy a set of cyber eyes. No, I've already possessed this cyberware. Yeah. So the um, cyber eyes essentially just means um, I'm able to see invisible um, enemies easier, and if I'm in a dark area, uh, it's a lot easier for the character to see. And a smart link. Um, so rather than having a uh, laser pointer attached to your gun, you've essentially got a uh, camera mounted um, in the barrel that plugs into the um, visual cortex of your brain. So you essentially can see through your gun, which means it's that much easier to actually hit things. Yay! Um, that's not going to be my ultimate cyberware. I'm planning on decking my character out uh, completely in cybernetics. Because <laughs> as a decker, I don't need to worry about um, essence or humanity. Um, so let's see. Got that done. Now let's go to this point, which is, I think, my latest point here. Um, this is in downtown Seattle in the lower left-hand corner. It's a guy named Roscoe. He buys um, uh, data off of you. So if you go to any of these terminals, um, yeah, you know, call taxi, vid phone, we've seen that, we've seen taxi, cyberspace, we haven't talked about that. Um, you can either enter a passcode, which if you're doing a specific run for a Johnson, it'll give you a specific number, you type that, or um, your character automatically types it in and you go to a specific um, matrix map. Um, otherwise you can go to a random one by just hitting system search which we're doing right now. Um, now, I've upgraded some of these already. Um, attack level 4, uh, healing level 1. You don't really take that much damage. The most important thing, though, is increasing your deception. It's better to not have to fight than uh, to fight. So, you know, there's going to be times where you're going to be forced to fight in the Matrix. Uh, but yeah, try not to, and then your life will be that much easier. And if you've noticed, down in the corner there, it looks like our computer avatar is Pepsi Man, if you're familiar with Japanese pop culture. But yes, here we go for the uh the matrix so when you have just a random kind of 3d shape in the front there that means uh you don't know what's behind it and the big thing in the back is um what kind of node you're on this one's just sort of a standard node um which looks like a computer chip so let's try to deceive our way through it didn't like that but it just resisted it. So that means it didn't like what we typed, but it isn't on alert. Okay, it liked it that time, so we get to go in. Yay! Enter the system. Um, the stuff on the left, the CPU, SPU, IOP, SAN, SM, uh, DS, uh, 
the four in the middle are essentially the same. They're they're all um, as far as this game is concerned, they're just nodes in the system that you have to jump through. The CPU is the thing that controls uh, the alert system. And if you go to a CPU, you can actually like go anywhere in the system uh, without having to jump around. Uh, those places are usually really guarding, are really well guarded. The DS, data storage, that's where we're looking for, because we want money. And in order to get money, we need data. So let's see if we can sneak our way past this one. Ah, thank you. Aha, so, yeah, this place opened up a whole lot. Ooh, I remember uh, this map. This one can be pretty tough. So we're going to head right up over to a CPU. I've yet to find a CPU that you can actually deceive your way through, so we're just going to start with attacking. Now, um, the A, B, and C buttons do different attack animations, but I can't really find how, uh, like, there's really no difference to them besides the animation, so we're going to start with A, which is the, oh, you, <sighs> that's the, um, the tar pit ability that the computer sometimes has. That just completely removes one of your programs, typically your um, attack program. And it means you would have to buy it all over again, and that's expensive, and that's what load game is for. Yeah, yeah, that's... Um... Okay. Let's see if this thing sends me to a different place. I hope so. Ah, yep. Definitely a different place. First off, there's no security. Yay! I go over here and be like, Hey! Thank you! Okay, I can go right to the CPU, but um, let's go over to the um, data storage here. Because, I mean, that's what we're really wanting. Okay, that means, yeah, you definitely can't use deception to get through it. Um, on this one, those little balls it keeps sending to the right, if they get to the edge of the screen, there's a chance that the um, system's alerted to you. Um, and we didn't want to be alerted to. So here you can see transfer data or erase. Um, there's really no purpose to erase stuff uh, unless it makes you feel good. So let's transfer some data. Present data store, you find local accounts, 50 megabytes. Or P, that's not bytes. Whatever. Yeah, we'll download it. You find security expenses. Nice. Nothing of interest. Your actions have been noticed by the system. All preca uh, precautions are now in force. Yeah, well, whatever. Uh, corporate accounts. Ooh, 60. 50, I'll take that. And now they're really alerted. And are looking for me. Nothing of interest. That's fine. Nothing of interest. Ow. System overloaded. Logging out all users. So they just kind of shut down their system. Audi. My name's Roscoe. My business is buying info and selling it off to the highest bidder. You got any data for me, partner? I'll gladly give you a fair deal. I've got some data I'd like to sell. Gestures to the terminal on his desk. Well, hook up your deck up to my old hog here, and we'll get down to the biz. Uh, this file account. Local accounts. I might be able to find a use for that info. How about I offer you 250 new yen? Yeah, it's pretty low, but okay. Uh, file here. Security expenses. 500 new yen. Yeah, sure. 
corporate account. How about I offer you 1,200 new yen? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. I've seen up to like four grand that he's just offering you. Another um, 1,200 plus another 50. Nice. Looks like we reached the big endo file marker. Well, you all know to come to me when you got more data. Absolutely. So, yeah, if you want to earn boohoo money, yeah, you, you go to the Matrix. Um, the only thing that's not great about it is that you don't get money much experience points from doing that. You get experience mostly by um, doing quests um, and shadow runs and the like. So, um, you're not going to be able to level up quite as much. But, I mean having plenty of money to toss around does help a whole lot um yeah notice firearms six computer six these will go up to 12 so i've still got a lot of stuff to increase over here but yeah halfway isn't bad and over here five and sorcery start off with four melee combat whatever i mean you have a high strength might as well um but yeah, that's um, that's typically what I have been doing, is doing uh, cyberspace runs. Because, again, that's where you get pretty much most of your money. And it's cool, I guess. Thank you. Actually, yeah, I'm just going to do a real quick run here. Didn't like that. Thank you. And there's a the CPU, but... Ooh, a couple of data stores. Let's go to this one. Make it quick. Yeah, data store is very hard to deceive your way through. They're usually, um, oh, let's do the other animations, like the throwing star. Nice. And then the laser. Aha. Again, it's just an animation. Let's just start transferring data. Surveillance data? Oh, no, no, oh. Okay. On the bright side, if a place has already been taken over, um, yeah, it should be okay. And let's see if we can take out a CPU. Why not? Oh! Aha! Uh -huh. Like I said, it is very rare, but sometimes you can um, meet a... Uh, CPU that'll take stuff, or uh, take a deception. Um, cancel alert. Uh, remember last time when they were like, hey, they're on to you. Um, you could go here to cancel the alerts. Um, no problem. And then, yep, you can go anywhere in the system from a CPU, which is kind of nice. I wish it didn't do this animation every time you went to a place that's already been opened, but whatever. Start taking stuff. I'll grab it. And before we leave... Yeah, yeah. But I'm going to places that I've already... Um, cut myself through, so they aren't really going to notice me, which is nice. <laughs> but yeah, we can cancel the alert. Alert cancel, just system checks okay, resume activities, nice. But we can also crash the system, which just takes it out. Um, why you'd want to? Some shadow runs, um, that's a way to complete the, uh, the objective, but in this case... I don't know, it's cool, I guess. Let's sell some more stuff. 600, useless. Um, 
1200, 600, 1200. Eh, not bad. So, yeah, that's what I've been doing to uh, raise money. Um, so, when we come back, uh, hopefully, I will have gained enough um, money and probably experience to maybe help Aragorn out. Ooh. Crab's part as you were approached by a Lone Star Patrol. A moment, citizen. We want a word with you. I guess we're going to go a little bit extra for this. Let's talk to them. Keeping your cool, you answer all their questions convincingly. Finally, Lone Star continues on their way. Yeah. Um, if you're carrying a bunch of illegal equipment, like, you know, a submachine gun, um, they can theoretically just, like, frisk you and take all of your stuff. Um... You can either talk your way out of it, or uh, they can seize your equipment, which would be bad. Um, or um, you can fight your way through it, which, yeah, at this point it wouldn't be that difficult, but eh, let's not do fighting. Not for the moment. So, anyway, um, relatively boring episode, but hey, at least you got to see the Matrix. So, when we come back, hopefully something more excited. Have a good one.